Red Sonia Origins, the alluring warrior from the golden period of the sword and sorcery genre. When we hear Red Sonia, we immediately think of the iconic red-haired warrior who has become a famous legend in pop culture. But who exactly is this character that has been given the title of the She-Devil? Red Sonia was originally created by Robert E. Howard in the short story titled The Shadow of the Vulture, wherein she was portrayed as a sword and sorcery heroine. Red Sonia was later incorporated into Marvel Comics in 1960. 73, and was referred to as the She-Devil with a Sword. Let us explore the origins of this stunning yet strong warrior who was known as the greatest swordswoman of the Hyborian Age. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Bridget Nielsen scorched the screen opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger as Red Sonia. In 1985, Richard Fleischer directed a Red Sonia film that starred Bridget Nielsen in the titular role of this fierce warrior while Arnold Schwarzenegger played the male lead. The movie was inspired by the Red Sonia comics and was set in the fictional Hyborian Age, created by Robert E. Howard. The movie followed Sonia's life from a very early age, wherein she was assaulted and left to die by some soldiers of the Queen Gidron. Gidron was a despot ruler who had murdered Sonia's entire family after the young girl rejected the Queen's sexual advances. While Sonia was taking her last breaths, the Red Goddess Skathak answered her cries of agony and blessed her with various powers such as speed, strength, and the ability to fight. However, Skathak gave her these powers only on the condition that Sonia wouldn't sleep with any man unless he could defeat her in combat. Sonia then began her training under the eye of a swordmaster and stayed away from all men. She also had a sister, Varna, who was one of the priestesses at a nearby temple that aimed to banish the all-powerful talisman. This talisman had created all beings, but it was now the need of the hour to imprison it in complete darkness before it got too powerful to control. Queen Gedrin's army got to the priestess at the temple and killed some of them while taking the others captive before they could vanquish the talisman. Sonia then set out to look for her sister and got some help from the Lord of Hyrcania, Kalador. She eventually found her sister, who had been brutally injured and was on the verge of dying. Varna asked Sonia to find the talisman and then send it into the darkness before it destroys the world. Kalador offered to accompany Sonia on this adventure, but she refused and set out by herself to the ruined kingdom of Hablok. Here, she met the young Prince Tarn and his servant Falcon, who told her that Gedrin used the talisman to destroy Hablok when they refused to give up their kingdom. Prince Tarn invited Sonia to work for him, but she refused the offer and then set out to Berkubain, where she would find Gedrin. While Sonia traveled to Berkubain, she came across a mountain gate that can only be accessed with some keys owned by Lord Breitag. Breitag refused to let Sonia pass just like that, and she had to kill him in order to take the mountain keys. However, Breitag's troops cornered Sonia after she killed their leader, and she found herself in a tough spot. Finally, Kalador came to Sonia's aid and revealed that he had been secretly following her all along. The two continued the rest of the journey together, and Sonia once again came across Prince Tarn and Falcon, who had now been captured by some bandits. They freed the two men, and the entire party of four set out to Berkubain. While near the land of the Perpetual Night, Gedrin's radar picked up on their presence, and she allowed Sonia to enter her territory unharmed. Gedrin then used the talisman to create a storm, which left them with no choice but to seek shelter in a watery cave in Isitan. Here, Sonia and the others were faced with a killing machine, and Sonia and Kalador defeated the beast together and managed to escape Isitan. Sonia even got to know Kalador a little more and then declared that he could not have her unless he defeated her in a sword fight. Kalador then challenged her to a duel, but it resulted in a draw. After some moments of relief, the group arrived at Castle Berkubain, and they decided that Prince Tarn should stay back while the others ventured inside. Sonia confronted Gedrin in her chambers, while Kalador and Falcon got rid of her guards in the other parts of the castle. One of Gedrin's men, Eichel, had a plan to escape the castle with all the gold they had seized from Havlock, but Prince Tarn got the hold of him outside the castle gates and crushed him to death by the castle's door. Sonia and Gedrin finally 
faced each other, and the evil queen realized that she was no match for Sonya without some help from the talisman. Gidron rushed to the Chamber of Lice to find the talisman, but its powers caused the chamber's door to fling open on its own. Moreover, the talisman had cracked open the castle's grounds, and a chasm of hot lava flowed beneath the floor. Sonya finally used her sword to corner Gidron and pushed her through the floor and into the hot lava. She even flung the talisman in the lava, thereby destroying it and sending it into darkness. All these events also caused the castle to fall apart, and Sonya, Kalidor, and Falcon rushed out of the place just in time. While Tarn and Falcon headed back to Hablek with their rightful gold, Kalidor managed to defeat Sonya in a duel, and the two shared a kiss as the movie came to an end. Red Sonya also appeared in other media such as the cartoon show Conan the Adventurer, which was also set in the Hyborian Age. The Rich Comic Book History of the Character Sonya's origins could be traced back to the Hyborian Age, wherein a gang of mercenaries killed her parents and brothers when she was just 17. These men even raped Sonya, burned down her house, and took away all their possessions before leaving her behind in shame. Sonya was then bestowed her powers by the goddess Skathak, and she soon became a fierce red-haired warrior who could defeat just about anyone in combat. Though Sonya was initially a supporting character for Conan, her swordswoman persona paired with her striking bikini-clad appearance became a massive hit with the audience. Sonya was famously known for her red hair and bikini armor, and she was brought in even more frequently in the Conan comics. By 1975, Sonya's character became even more popular, and Marvel Comics decided to give her a feature in the Spider-Man comics in 1979. Red Sonya later got her own comics that ran for 15 issues, while she kept being a part of the Conan series. In the Spider-Man comics, Sonya's character traveled through time to modern-day New York after her body was switched with that of Mary Jane. Here, Sonya fought along with Spider-Man to defeat Kulan Gath, a fierce adversary from Sonya's time. Sonya and Spider-Man defeated Kulan together, and Sonya then returned back to her own era. In the 1980s, Marvel issued two miniseries as well as a complete volume of Red Sonya comics. Her appearance was altered from a bikini armor to a blue tunic, and this reboot went on for 13 issues before it ended. In 1995, Marvel released the last Red Sonya scavenger hunt comics, and Dynamite Entertainment then brought back this character in the 2000s. Dynamite Entertainment got the rights to publish a Red Sonya comic, and they even bought back her classic bikini-clad look for the series. These comics were a huge hit and marked Red Sonya's return to popularity. In 2007, Marvel partnered with Dynamite Entertainment to issue a miniseries featuring Red Sonya and Spider-Man. In 2008, her character was killed off in the 34th issue of the Red Sonya comic series, after which she traveled through the underworld for a brief period. In the next issue, Sonya returned to life as a different woman from a different time and place. Her reincarnation was known as Lady Sonya of Dorne, and she lived a comfortable life waiting for her her husband's return. Lady Sonya was also related to the original Red Sonya, who was referred to as a legendary warrior in Hyrcania. This version of Sonya had the physique of a noble woman, and did not possess all the same abilities as her older versions. However, she soon picked up her fighting skills and unleashed her terror on Lucan Martyr and his gang of pirates who had seemingly killed her husband. In 2014, Red Sonya comics were rebooted by writer Gail Simone, who altered Sonya's origin story and gave her a new background. In this reboot, Sonya was named Sonita, and she was the Hyrcanian village chief's daughter. After some raiders attacked their village, Sonita remained the sole survivor of this attack and learned to survive on her own in the wilderness. Sonita learned to hunt and even track down all the raiders that attacked her village and killed them one by one. She was later captured and put in an arena to fight for about three years, where she picked up on incredible fighting skills and took on the name Red Sonia. Let us explore some of the major major story arcs from the Red Sonya comics that display the strength and ferocity of this mighty warrior. While Sonya was traveling around the world, she came across a bunch of bandits who were trying to attack a messenger. Sonya intervened and got rid of these bandits, almost taking them out from a distance using her bow and arrow. She then approached the man who told her that he was a messenger of Gathia and was trying to convey a message to the Zeta tribes. Sonya sets out on a journey with him to Gathia, and the messenger tells him that their city has become quite pure and that she is only allowed there because she saved his life. However, the messenger soon started choking after drinking some water from a pond, and a strange monster started slithering out of his mouth. Sonya had to kill him to stop the monster from coming out of his body, and
and she later visited Gathia all alone. She had carried the messenger's decapitated head as proof, and the citizens of Gathia even seemed to recognize her. However, they refused to believe that there was something impure or corrupt about the waters or even their city. They believed that she was trying to stir up trouble, and the soldiers of Gathia soon launched an attack on Sonia. While Sonia tried to kill off these soldiers one by one, she fell and slipped through a trap door. Sonia found herself trapped within this city, and she passed out only to wake up and find that she had been chained. Sonia was then brought in front of a priest who asked her to worship the Celestial One that had allegedly purified the entire land of Gathia. Sonia refused to accept the Celestial One as her god, and the priestess declared that she had to die in that case. Though the priest killed Sonia by stabbing her in the chest, she later came back to revive her using dark magic. The next day, Sonia woke up in perfect condition, and the priest then introduced himself as Fa. He stated that they needed her help to get rid of the Celestial One, and told her that he used a blade of Vavin to kill her before bringing her back to life to ask for help. Though Sonia felt fit, the blade of Vavin was still wedged into her body. The priest further told her that the blade must be returned back to the idol where he got it from, or else she would surely die. Sonia was initially reluctant to help him, but the priest told her that he also wished to take down the Celestial One. Finally, Sonia agreed to help him, and the two set out for the idol, along with Mika, Kang, Solath, and an acquaintance named Ozen. When they finally reached the idol, Sonia removed the blade from her chest, then Solath showed her true colors and betrayed the team. She killed Mika and Kang before Sonia stepped in and killed Solath in an instant. Sonia later passed out, and Ozen took care of her until they could continue the journey together. Priest Fa later reappeared and talked to Sonia about how Solath was working as a spy, and that even he had no idea despite knowing her for a very long time. Moreover, Fa told Sonia that the Zeta leader needed help defeating the Celestial One, since he destroyed their houses by opening up a dam. However, the Zeta were then revealed to be the same bandits that had been attacking the Gathia messenger initially, and they turned up their noses at the thought of accepting help from Sonya. The Zeta leader challenged Sonya to a duel, and later sneakily attacked her when she looked away. Sonya's reflexes acted quickly to deflect this attack, and she even killed the Zeta leader by stabbing him with a knife. The rest of the Zeta then bowed down to Sonya as their new leader, and and the entire group even prepared for a special dinner. At night, Sonia got some alone time with Ozen, and the two talked about the Celestial, Sonia's travels, and the condition that she cannot be with any man unless he defeats her in a fight. Ozen then jokingly tries to defeat Sonia, but she deflects his attack. The next morning, the group prepares to attack the Celestial's kingdom. Sonia, Ozen, and one of the Zeta easily managed to enter this kingdom, and they killed all the guards when they heard the cries of trapped children. Sonia discovered that these noises were coming from a basement, but they reached the place to find that the kids were demon spawns. Though Sonia was hesitant to kill them initially, she eventually got rid of them and finally arrived in the Celestial's room. The Celestial was already prepared to duel her, but Sonia used her powers and knocked his helmet off. She then learned that the Celestial was actually a Zeta in disguise, and she quickly killed him with her knife. Sonia first cut his neck open and then cut off his arms before flinging him off a ledge and into a water body. However, she also lost her balance and ended up falling into the water with Osun, and she was later unable to even find Osun. Sonia's mission was successful, and she then headed to a different town where women and children were being mistreated after the men had gone off to fight in wars. She offered to help them, but the women turned down her help, and Sonia decided to head to a bar instead. At the bar, she was given some spiked drinks that caused her to fall unconscious, and some men then showed up to kill her. It seemed that the villagers had a plan to kill Sonia, but she somehow managed to regain her consciousness and killed all the men present there. She then left with all the village's children, but not before tying up the bartender that served her the spiked drinks. Sonia later went to another bar and picked fights with random men before running into a man named Ander, who needed her help. Ander asked Sonia's help in escaping from some pirates, and she agreed to accompany him to the harbor. They set off in a tiny boat, and then walked through forests when Andrew revealed that he was on a mission to find some information about his father. The pirate's leader, Gorkan, had told Andrew that his father had died at sea, but the boy believed that there was more to this. He and Sonya finally came across a cave and discovered a treasure chest. Andrew even picked up a stone that showed him that what had truly gone down with his father. Andrew learned that Gorkan had killed his 
father when the pirates themselves arrived at the cave. Sonya helped Ander defend himself against the pirates, and finally the Void killed Gorkin and avenged his father's death. Sonya helped get rid of Gorkin's group of pirates, and the two then parted ways. Sonya later ran into a group of people that worshipped the Celestial and even carried out rituals on other people as a part of their worship. Sonya killed all these people and then traveled to a village where she discovered that everyone had been killed off. She only found a young girl named Karina, who had been attacked by some men. Sonya then decided to find the men responsible for massacring the entire village, and even attacking Karina, and the young girl also followed Sonya to the men's base camp. Sonya even helped Karina with some basic training, and it turned out that she was quite skilled at archery. The two of them got rid of all the men and soon parted ways after Karina returned to her home. After Karina returned to the village, a strange man sneaked up on Sonya and tried to attack her. While Sonya fought him off, she saw that the man had Karina's decapitated head in his hand. While Sonya was disturbed to see this, Osen reappeared by her side, and the two of them escaped this mystery man by taking shelter in the temple's ruins. A behemoth saved them, and a man later showed up and revealed that he had sent the behemoth to save their lives. The man introduced himself as Sumaro, and told Sonya that the goddess sent him to find her. It seemed that Sumaro's father, killing Kyo, has been possessed by the dark shadow after his father fell for the dark god known as Borat Nafori. Sonya agreed to help him, and wondered if the goddess had directed Sumoro to her was the very same goddess who gave her powers. Sonya and Sumoro finally reached the mountains around the Dark God's castle, where they learned that a witch was giving birth to the son of an evil god, Kulanga. They first decided to kill this child when all hell broke loose, and Sumoro somehow located his father amid all the chaos. However, he was unable to get rid of the shadow's influence on his father, while Kulan's son possessed Sonya's horse and threatened her. Finally, the goddess appeared at the scene and advised them to find the old gods and awaken them from their sleep. Osen, Sonya, and the father-son duo traveled for a long time in search of these gods and faced many attacks, especially by Kulan's evil son. King Quilo eventually killed himself to free himself from the clutches of the Dark Shadow, and the rest of the group met Kalivo. Sonya tried to persuade Kalivo to, into helping them and told him that he would be worshipped if he aided them into getting rid of the evil. They all decided to return to Hyrcania, where they could find a special blade that could summon an entire army. Back at Hyrcania, Sonya managed to get her hands on the sword, but chaos soon ensued as Kulan Gath's son showed up to fight them. Finally, the demonic son managed to summon Kulan himself, and Kalivo died during these fights. The mystery man who had earlier tried to attack Sonya once again made an appearance, and Sonya was forced to fight him. Sonya got on a boat while fighting him, and was almost about to deliver the final blow when the water current caused her to lose balance. Osen stayed by her side and helped her regain balance while the mystery man managed to escape. Though the boat seemed to be floating in risky conditions, Osen, Sumaro, and Sonya somehow made it through the journey and survived in the end. While Sonya was not satisfied with the mission ending on such a note, she knew that she couldn't do much and decided to get some rest for a while. What makes Red Sonia such a deadly warrior? Red Sonia was bestowed with her powers by the Red Goddess Skathak, and was quite a deadly warrior as a result of this. Sonia was always at the peak of her physique, and had super speed, strength, agility, as well as inhuman reflexes. She was also a skilled swordmaster, and had defeated various potent enemies with the help of her sword. Besides the sword, Sonya could also get the hang of other weapons with little effort, and she was highly skilled in handling a variety of weapons, and even constructing them out of minimal resources when required. She was also good at archery, and could take down several opponents from a distance with just a bow and some arrows. Sonya was even skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and had even trained in various martial arts forms. When Red Sonia was put in a risky situation, her anger caused her to go into a Berserker Fury, which increased her strength and caused her to take out many opponents single-handedly. After years of traveling across the Earth, Sonia became skilled at navigating places, tracking down people, and even covering her tracks. She was even quite adept at disguising herself or moving in stealth without being detected by anyone. She also had a lot of stamina, and could endure pain and keep going in extreme conditions for much longer than humans. She could bear severe weather even in just her bikini armor, and was immune to most human conditions. Sonya was watched over by the goddess Skathak, who acted as a guardian angel that protected this fierce warrior in risky, life-threatening situations. While Sonya was quite skilled at fighting battles on her own, the divine protection that was given to her by this goddess only made her more powerful, and she was greatly feared by others. Everything you need to know about the Red Sonya reboot. 
Millennium Films announced a Red Sonja reboot movie in 2017, but the film had some trouble getting off the ground, as there were some issues with the director at the time. The X-Men director Brian Singer was set to direct the movie in 2017, but he was dropped after some sexual assault allegations came up, and the movie was put on hold. Later, Joey Soloway was set to direct the movie, but this did not hold ground either, and Soloway soon backed out as well. Finally, it was decided that MJ Bassett will direct the film, and that filming would begin in 2022. In 2021, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Hannah John Kamen was selected to play the titular role, and that Sasha Baron Cohen was to play the role of the evil Kunal Gat. However, later reviews reported that Hannah John Kamen is also likely to quit this movie after Joey Soloway backed out of being the director in 2021. While there has been a lot of back and forth regarding the cast and crew, hopefully the film will go into production soon, and then we can enjoy it in no time. Conclusion To sum it up, Red Sonja has been an integral part of pop culture and has quite a widespread presence across various comics and series for a very long time. Sonja has managed to stand the test of time and is still a widely popular character who is being written into newer series and comics. If done right, the new Red Sonja project can be a huge showstopper and we look forward to it. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!